This is the one thing that a British person has the moral rights to be passionate about. We know our beans. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well. You, right there. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to our kitchen. Today, we're making homemade versions of these. Heinz baked beans. This is not a sponsored video, but as a British person, I am extremely passionate about baked beans. It's a lot of baked beans. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Big old stretch. Right, we're gonna do a scene, alright? Boston, let me tell you a story. The first time I was in America and I had baked beans. I think it was baked beans with like some sort of baked potato thing, which... That sound good? I remember looking at them going, oh, that's a funny colour, I'm not used to that. And I ate it like, oh my gosh! And people were like, are you okay, Barry? Are you okay? Thanks, Boston. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I'm okay, but what the heck was that? That's not baked beans. And they looked, and um, this is a, just a Google image search. This is a tin of a similar variety of bean. I thought I'd get them in the international supermarket in the UK, but they didn't actually have it. Um, but they're like more, not the baked beans we're used to. That was like sweet and tangy and kind of like syrupy. And I'm not gonna lie, they were nice. And I've seen recipes for homemade baked beans before, but no. Our baked beans are like this, in a light tomato sauce. So yeah, you bung some bread in a toaster, get that going, get the beans out the tin, bung them in the microwave, or you could cook them on the hob. Oh, best thing ever. And obviously you put cheese on it, Worcester sauce, season it, but I'm just interested today in trying to recreate this. This legitimately is my breakfast, so excuse me. Mm. I mean, the other reason I'm eating it is you've got to eat them warm. If you've ever had cold beans, I think we've all kind of been there once in our life. It's the most horrendous thing ever. Uh, people tend to have baths in them because they're that bad. We have other brands here. This is one that we have. They're all slightly tweaked to the sauce. When I was a kid, I used to think that you actually got orange colored beans that were in the tins, but it is the tomato sauce that dyes it. So I've been bombarded with this recipe. This lady in Australia is like, you must try this. I used to live in the UK. You've got to try it. So that, is what we're gonna try and recreate today. Homemade Heinz style beans. And the most important thing with homemade baked beans is, well, the beans. All right, here is a selection of beans, but there is an imposter. This is a tin of uh, mixed beans. So in there involves ones, uh, you might call them different other countries, like kidney ones. So they basically got like that red shell around it, obviously black beans, stuff like that. You want only white beans and the cool thing is you can kind of customize it you can make big chunky ones but i want to try and make this as authentic as possible we've got dried ones which is different to the ones you get in a tin because these are kind of already done for you they're soaked whereas these these are cannellini beans and again it doesn't matter but i feel like these are quite similar to the size of normal baked beans in a tin so what you do first of all is soak them now you want to do that for quite a long time because it softens it up and sort of absorbs some of that water so it makes it slightly bigger and you get way more control than a tin but it will take a long time. Once they've been soaked for hours, which in my reconstruction uh, is basically about five minutes, uh, we put them into a pan to bring to a simmer. Beautiful. And our lid goes on. Leave it to bubble away for a solid hour which we will come back to or you could of course get the tins. So this is the equivalent so when they're like this, they're been soaked in the water, stored in water as well. They're puffed up a little more, but they're way more delicate. Stir them too much and they could actually turn to mush. Whereas for this homemade project, that might give you way more control. But just give a comparison, uh, look, these are the butter beans. Woo! There is nothing wrong uh, with you using these as an alternative because they're white beans again. They're just gonna look like jumbo ones, all right? Actually, when you think of it like that, it's quite clever because you know when like, you try and get kids to eat like more vegetables and stuff like that and sometimes you just whiz loads them up into like a sauce and it's like, ah, haha, they hate celery but they're eating that sauce, right? With the beans, I know if I was to try and serve my kids that and go, look, eat that, they we wouldn't, they, yeah, you know? My kids blooming love it. I mean, I, I, it's just, 
so good it's like comfort food you know the whole point in this video by the way is not to say don't buy tins of branded baked beans it's if i can replicate that taste that's amazing because you could potentially batch buy it. i don't know if it'll be cheaper although when you go abroad they did actually have some uh, heinz baked beans i think in the us but it was in the international aisle which is so expensive so for you guys it might be cheaper i don't know but let's just see if it tastes right first well if we're going to go to all this effort you don't really want to make one tin you might as well do a few but they really are delicate. You can see where they've all sort of split. So to make the sauce, these are most of our ingredients. There's also some corn flour that we'll use to thicken it up later on. Remember I've been sent this recipe and I'm like looking at the ingredients going, okay, uh, let's see what happens. Onion powder, garlic powder, Worcester sauce. Worcester is actually quite near where I live. Vinegar, pepper, brown sugar. And you're getting worried, like, where's the tomato-ness? Well, lots of ketchup. Some more tomato, but this is uh, the concentrated tomato puree stuff, so really strong. Pinch of salt. Some water. And uh, chicken stock. So you can use vegetable stock as well, apparently, if you like. I'm not happy with that colour, actually. Look at that. Is that right? Actually, no, I'm quite happy with that. And when we warm it on the hob, that could make an effect too. And look how thin and runny that sauce is. We don't want it like that, folks, do we? Let's get it hot. So we're just gonna warm this up, let those flavors mingle. Of course, whilst you're thinking, oh, I've got a little bit of time, I can start to get my corn flour ready. If you wish, you can spill it over the floor. This wasn't the stuff on the floor, by the way. <laughs> and uh, this is just gonna be a thickener. I'm not gonna use all of this in one go. Because it's scary, whenever I've used, I don't use this that often, but whenever I have, I've been like, yeah, I just need to thicken something. Then I put it in and it's just like, bleh. And we've got time on our hands, we can control it. That's what this whole homemade thing's about, I think. All right, so that is bubbling away like an absolute dream. I'm just turning the heat down. We've reduced it slightly too. And I've got half of that slurry mix and I'm pouring it right in now. I'm just gonna see if that's gonna do enough. So we'll keep changing it and tweaking it till we're happy. That's made an instant impact. Oh my gosh. You see the difference there? Still a little thin, so we might use it all. Still a little thin. This is where I end up making it too thick. Folks, I just went to get some more corn flour out of the cupboard because I want to thicken it up just slightly more. Uh, and this is the first video I've done since Amy passed away. Uh, it's been about a week now. Uh, I'm still quite upset about it. Thank you to all the kind messages. I really appreciate it. And it's almost like she had to get one last little thing because as I took the corn flour out of the cupboard, I uh, knocked out this uh, little pug shaker uh, and the, <laughs> the paw fell off. Uh, so I'm gonna have to try and glue that on. She's still with us in spirit. <laughs> This guy is absolutely loving all the attention. So, uh, yeah. Right, mate? Oh, I'm not sure if you can even see that. That is bubbling away and lovely thickened up. Oh my gosh, it smells so fresh. So here are the uh, tinned beans uh, and they've kind of been left to stand in this bowl, really. So out of their water and you can see that they are quite mushy. So I've transferred the sauce to a jug and we'll just pour that on top and hopefully this will start to look like baked beans. Beans, which bizarrely are called baked beans that aren't actually baked. So with them being delicate, a spatula, because it's a bit more bendy, is gonna give it a little bit more gentle as we just encourage that all around. Oh my gosh. That suddenly, <laughs> I thought the color was a little out, but the white in the beans has brought it down and taken that harshness out, which is pretty much bang on. That's amazing. All right, now it's time for the harder beans that we did not soak. They have been bubbling away for 90 minutes. And if you try this, woo! I topped the water up twice during that because it was starting to sort of all evaporate away. And what you might notice is you've got these little shells that have come off the beans like so, okay? So when you're soaking, you're gonna loosen all this up anyway. So what it's given you is these really nice beans. And I'm just gonna have a quick taste. Yeah, oh my gosh. So the difference between the ones that have been soaked, obviously they're a little bit bigger, but these are super soft. They're like almost mushy, whereas the hard ones, they've got a little bit of bite to it, which means when we warm it up now, it's kind of got the chance for those flavors to sort of fuse together and you can nail that texture rather than getting it mushy, but we'll do both. It's got a slightly more tangy smell. That's the only thing so far, but I kind of like that. It feels like my sort of 
custom smell in a way. Right, we'll get them both warmed. For a change, I didn't want to lace this video with a load of puns, but I've been having quite a lot of fun and learning quite a bit today. Yes. Right, I'll get some toast ready and we'll compare. Uh, I've been doing these videos where I've been reviewing old school recipes and cookbooks and I thought I'd do Barry's Cookbook Corner soon, so any cookbook suggestions called quirky ones particularly would be awesome. Someone suggested on Twitter, I forget who, this Toblerone cookbook? And I'm like, yeah, this is amazing! And that was a video I was going to do today and I looked at some recipes, I'm just going to pick a page at random, we'll just go like, I don't know, let's go here, What's, what is it? Millionaire's shortbread. Alright, look, it's just basically millionaire shortbread, except they swapped the chocolate for Toblerone. I don't know what I was expecting, but I kind of wanted a bit more, like, I don't know, pizzazz. Chocolate and ginger bundt cake. It is literally nothing to do with Toblerone. They've just literally got, right, instead of milk chocolate, just put a Toblerone in it. But any cool recipe books you've seen, let me know. I so want to put cheese on it and Worcester sauce, all that stuff, but we've got to be fair. All right, let's start with, this is the ones from the tin. Looking good, smelling amazing. And these are the ones that we've spent an hour simmering away. To be fair, despite not soaking them, they have puffed up to almost the size of the tinned version. Let's have a taste. Right, let's try the tinned one first of all. That sauce is amazing. Oh my gosh. The beans are a bit mushy though. Look, I've got to be honest, they're soft, but they almost, as you bite them, they just kind of perish. Right, so let's try this one. These are the ones that we've worked on. We've actually done it. <laughs> I'm quite at this point now going, why have I done this? But like, that is actually perfectly cloned. And I think if you soaked it maybe just for two hours, not completely overnight, just to get that initial softness to help you, it might, I don't, don't know if it would improve it. The texture of the beans is absolutely perfect. It's just that little bit, almost like a pasta like al dente, you know, it's a teeny bit there. And with that extra little bit of bite there, it's kind of like taking me away from this, like focusing purely on the sauce, which is kind of like where that slightness is fine, but the mush is just pushing it a bit more to go, ooh, enhancing the sweetness. So you could adjust it to your liking. If you want to try this, particularly if you live overseas, I think it will actually, if you're from uh, the UK and you've had a, a taste of them, I think it'll, you'll really be impressed by it. As for me not buying the tins and making it in bulk, it works out actually to make it fresh about 10% more in cost. So right now, not really justifiable, but that super freshness and that flexibility of putting other beans in it, chickpeas, all that kind of crazy stuff. Blooming stonking. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and make sure your notifications are turned on. Any cool video ideas you'd like to see me attempt, get in touch on your social media platform of choice. If you're not gonna eat it all at once, which you probably won't, uh, keep it in an airtight container in the fridge, but I think we'll see much, much later tonight what Mrs. B thinks. L-O-V-E is how you spell food. Gonna make some truffles to get you in the mood. To me, your support is smooth as silk. When I have my cereal, I pour on milk. If you got a food mixer, give it a whirl. I gotta let you know I'm still cooking in love with you, girl. All right, Mrs. B is home. She's been to work. <laughs> so after filming that video, I legitimately went to the supermarket. Mrs. B messaged me, could you get us some toothpaste and some milk? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I went to Aldi and I did that classic thing when you go into one of the supermarkets and I got distracted, I came out with milk, toothpaste and an electronic s'more maker. <laughs> Everyone does it. Yeah. <laughs> so that is actually uh, unplanned my next video because I'm like, this is amazing. Uh, I haven't really looked at it, it's in the car boot still. Mrs. B is ready. Mrs. B. Are you ready? I'm ready. Mrs. B has no idea the difference between these two beans. The sauce is pretty much the is same. There's some horrible surprise in there. <laughs> No. Something hidden. Good idea though, but no, sadly okay. not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tastes like beans. <laughs> Tastes just like them out of a tin. Yeah. Yeah, the sauce is really like that thick tomatoey sauce. It's really nice. Awesome. So what are these going to be? Are these going to blow my head off or something? No, honestly, it's, I've not done anything crazy. It's not like Jack and the Beanstalk kind of vibe. It's literally the same thing. Although I have added a teeny bit of salt to oh. that sauce because I found it a teeny bit sweet. These have got a more, bit more of um, like firmness to them and like texture. I kind of prefer these. These those were kind of quite soft and mushy. Mushy. Yes. Yeah. 
This is B. Is that right? That is the yeah. There's no sinister nurse. It's literally just baked beans. So how did you get these? These were actually um, beans that weren't softened. You know when you buy them in a tin, they're soaked in water. Yeah. These were ones that were like rock hard. We we're supposed to oh. soak them, so they could be slightly softer. But that was my favourite too. And does it taste like like baked beans? It I does. thought, yeah. It's, you've got the right um, texture with the sauce, the thickness, and yeah, it's really good. But would you make homemade baked beans over buying tins? Yes. You would. I would. What you would eat those over? Yeah, because I know they're homemade. Wow. And they're better for you, aren't they? Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs>